played frisbee as a kid and always loved frisbee, but discovered disc golf and ultimate on the same day, but I had to leave California to do it. Found it when I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. And that was 1977, and object courses, and it was love at first sight, both ultimate and disc golf, and I haven't had my fill yet. He was Bob Vanderboss, and he was an incredibly feisty, competitive player. He was something, and uh, just to get in the playoff, he had to can, must have been close to a 50-foot putt into a headwind with a drop-off behind the basket. You know, the slope fell away pretty good, and it was unbelievable that he hit the putt. I knew right then I was done for. There was no way I was going to win. And, um, the playoff hole was uh, not real long, but it was, uh, we kind of threw from uphill down and around the corner, uh, a kind of a lefty shot, and Bob was a lefty, and I was a little closer than him, maybe 25, 27 feet uphill, and Bob was a little further from below the basket. And his putt was dead on line, just a little high, doink didn't go in, and somehow mine fluffed on down into the basket. And, uh, and uh, that was pretty doggone cool. I think the, the boy that probably should have took me down was Johnny Lissaman. And uh, we were neck and neck. And then going into the last nine holes or so, just seemed to me like Johnny uh, kind of pressed. He liked throwing uh, his lefty flick. And it, see, there were a few instances where a lefty backhand would have given him a bigger window through the gaps in the trees. and. And he had a few shots that just didn't quite hit the gap. I felt like he was not taking the best. He was comfortable with the sidearm, but it just wasn't the best odds shot. And uh, it cost him a few strokes there right toward the end and let me slip away. It was a busy year, uh, actually, because uh, we used two courses at Winthrop. We used Kilbourne and we used Hornet's Nest. And uh, a lot of people may not know, but the hornet's nest of now is not the hornet's nest I designed first off. It was my first course I ever designed and it was uh, maybe a mediocre course prior to Worlds and uh, Harold Duvall, Alan Beaver and Steve Lambert uh, approached me and we uh, walked out and I learned a lot more about course design, especially from Harold, but Steve and Alan, also mentors of mine, uh, and we tweaked that course and uh, made it what it is today. So uh, when you think hornet's nest, people think me, but it's a lot bigger than me. In my work, I'm a designer, an engineer slash designer, and I have to be able to look at a job site and think from right to left, left to right, up to down, back and forth. And that's one of the things Harold Duvall taught me also is don't lock yourself in. You get one idea and just stay with that and, and, and maybe box yourself into a corner. And I've learned that through my work. So I get to know, first of all, I just really get to know my property really well. I spend a lot of time getting to know it before I come up with any kind of design and say, yes, this is for sure. I want to design holes if it's a tough course, and a lot of my courses I've tried to make tough, that challenge people, challenge accuracy, and try to bait people into throwing a lot harder than they should. You played Angry Beaver today, and Nevin is much the same, and, and a lot of the pros didn't like it because, you know, a lot of it's mid-range, mid-range to landing zones, and a lot of people get sucked into pulling out a driver and throwing uh, a lot harder than they should, or at least that the odds say, the amount of times you nut that shot versus the amount of times you're gonna get a double or triple bogey says you probably ought not throw it and yet they do well that gives me some satisfaction yeah I do I do like that uh, I catch myself too though I go for it you know it's I just like challenging a player's skill and Carolina's golf is wooded golf and that's pretty much what you get here in Charlotte you're really really well served if you are patient take the time to hike Get to know your property completely, everything, all the trees, all the wonderful features it may offer. Are there, are there, is there a cluster of boulders, creeks, ravines, um, trees of interest, large poplar or oak trees, anything that's 
uh, beautiful and then incorporate that into your design either in a green or a tea area and all but I think I see a lot of people just go out and start designing before they really know the whole course and they say damn this is a tea pad here and this is my we're gonna have this hole this is a great hole and they design a great hole and then it boxes them into a corner and the holes on the other side are mediocre or, or worse and you know, if they'd taken more time, maybe they wouldn't have the great hole. They'd maybe really have a really good hole, and the other holes on the other side of it would be pretty good holes or good holes rather than lousy ones. Just more patience, more time. Don't don't make hasty decisions. Probably Renaissance, just th that course itself, because at that time I was young and s younger, <laughs> strong, still able to muscle heavy logs and timbers and stuff into place and had the time and the desire to build a course that was incredibly challenging on so many levels and um, you know the older I get the more scared of it I am I have to have a really good day to even want to go out and challenge it but I'd say just just Rennie the, the, the whole package of, of the gold course that was really cool that's my highlight of my disc golf career but it's a jury of your peers do they enjoy playing with you? Are you fun to play with? Do you bring people down? You know, are you a whiner, complainer? These are the things I hate the most about some of the people in the sport that'll get out and they don't own their own shots. They don't own their own poor round. It's uh, the designer's fault or the course's fault or something stupid. It's not them. And uh, that's just not me uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I don't try to bring people down. I might. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, but I don't think uh, that would happen very often, uh, and that's why I got the award uh, from a jury of my peers. And and I, to me, that's what it's about. It, it harkens back to the frisbee days, us long hairs out there, short pants, tennis shoes, no shirt, throwing, catching, enjoying the pure flight of the disc. Yeah, that's what it's about. It was. It was amazing. Uh, what we, the Charlotte Disc Golf Club, did. Not Stan, we. we got a number of really uh, wonderful course designers uh, entered the field of course designing. Uh, Sam Nicholson doing uh, Wingate Park. We had uh, uh, Witt, Craig Whitney, and Chris CTP Paterno doing R.L. Smith. We had uh, Mark Huther. Uh, doing Bailey Road and, uh, and and assisting along with Matt Keats, me at Nevin, and Rob Kelly uh, with some assistance from Ralph Vickers doing um, Idlewild. And they all did a bang-up job, amazing, not only design, but they bought into it, so they were the main muscle to build these things. And Sam uh, Nicholson uh, not only did wing it uh, with his sidekick, Tom Usselman, but um, really... Uh, mulled on all the other courses. I mean, he's one of the two mules here in town, and, and the amount of labor to do nine courses in four years was uh, beyond anything I can even describe. I, I'm still feeling it in uh, in my joints, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders. I, I'm not honestly recovered. I don't know if I will, but um, it just, especially toward that last four or five months, the push to polish now what we had in place uh, and when you're already weary and and shot so yeah it was an amazing accomplishment but I will tell you this too when Sam and Bill told me that they had bid on on, on the worlds in 2008 when we went up to Michigan to play I said some nasty things to them that had four letters because I really I mean I did know what lay ahead and it, it was every bit of the um, epical journey that I knew it would be I, I made a, a rash commitment to a little town right near where I live in Stallings and uh, we're about two-thirds of the way through a little beginner course there. It will have been worth it, but it's still, I got a deadline there and I'm really tired of that kind of stuff. I'm enjoying playing a lot more, hanging out with my buddies. Uh, it's awesome. I will say the wear and tear on me uh, has caused me to rethink some things to see if I'm still doing this in a year, but I, I gave up beer. Um, and um, eating differently, apples, uh, fruits and stuff, and uh, I've dropped a good little 
bit of weight and I'm feeling much better, sleeping better. And as I get older, I, I want to feel good. I don't want to feel like crap like I had been. So that's good. I'd like to play a little bit more, not really with the same eye of the tiger that I did back when I really cared. But I do want to play some more tournaments and stuff. But mostly just play with my buddies here in town on all these courses we've got. And I'm doing that. The, the big thing that's exciting me is our relationship with our park department. In here in Mecklenburg County is that they are going to start running youth league disc golf uh, that we're partnering with them for some stuff and uh, can you imagine a large city like Charlotte running youth leagues just like softball or soccer it is kicking off this year I think that's really big and exciting